Hello my dear friends, this is a painter cat, my name is Catherine, welcome on my channel and today we're gonna continue with a new year uh, composition. This time prepare acrylic and you will need a canvas. I'm using a canvas on board 2030. If you like to, you can create this composition on a paper also. This way choose a letter size of the paper. First, what I can recommend to you, wet your surface a little bit, spread water well, wait a little bit, like 10 seconds, and uh, remove if you still have some extra water. Uh, and next step, we're gonna create underpainting layer. This tutorial is a demonstration version because a real-time tutorial going for 2 hours and 7 minutes. In a real-time tutorial we are painting together step by step with a very detailed comments about each step, color mixing, type of the brushes and techniques you will need to use and also you can find a traceable ready to transfer and paint if you need to. Welcome, link down below, join my creative club for real-time tutorials. So let's go, let's see those main steps you will need to follow. Colors I recommend for underpainting. Well, it's a uh, red, it's amber burnt, it's green and ochre. You can use also a tiny bit of the black, but don't put too many because this way underpainting will look a mm, bit, you know, unsaturated. Spread these colors randomly and uh, the brush. It's a big and flat brush from the set of IKEA. I like it. It's a uh, nice quality for the budget brushes, I'd say. So I like it. I like how these brushes working with acrylic. It's a thick paints, but brushes spreading it really well. You can choose any flat big brush if you don't have this one and do the same. As soon as you put all these brush strokes, let it dry. I'm using a hair dryer, you know, because I like to paint fast in one go. And next, oh, I really like this technique. It's a sponging, round sponge. Uh, no need to pick a big shape like a 5 cm as we did a couple of tutorials before. Right now you need just a small one, the smallest actually. Size smallest I have, it's about 1.5 cm in a diameter. And the colors, it's uh, let's repeat all over again. It's a red, next it's gonna be a green. And then it's gonna be an ochre light. And by the way, when you're stamping, you're putting your mm, sponge on top of the surface. Turn the pole a little bit, like maybe 10 degrees, that's enough. This way, the print will look more clear, will have a really visible uh, round shape. Last color, ochre light. See, I'm turning the pole a little bit like this. Put these spots randomly. Next, it's a fun brush. Consistency of acrylic. Almost watery. It's not runny. It's not running from my palette. It's still here. But it needs to be very, very soft. Let's do some splatters. Actually, lots of splatters, but don't use white yet. Leave it for the end of the tutorial for the very last step. Dry it, dry it well, because next step, uh, let's create a gingerbread house. Idea for this tutorial, it came to me from the My Rose subscriber on my creative club. Thank you very much for it and I really hope you will enjoy the final results. So please let me know how it will turn for you. And my friends, if you're joining my creative club as a rose tier, you can uh, send me those paintings or maybe photos you're dreaming to create, you're dreaming to turn into the tutorial and we can talk to you what details are possible to include 
and what details will be missing because not all photos possible to turn into the nicely looking painting. This one is really beautiful and by the way, uh, reference photos you also can find in my creative uh, club, link up down below. So, it's a building. If you're using a traceable, the nice time, the perfect time to um, transfer lines straight after you created a splatters. Dry it and transfer. If you're transferring for the dark on the painting layer, use a chalk on the back side of your paper. If you're painting with me, it's a nice practice because it's a very simple shape of the house. Flat frontal wall, triangle uh, top part of it, left and right parts of the front wall are symmetrical completely and a tiny roof uh, that's mostly visible on the left part, that's it. But also here, it's a fir tree, very interesting detail. I can recommend to you, start from the star, from the top. Yes, I know if you're creating a real fir tree from the cookies, gingerbread cookies, you're usually starting from the bottom piece. Here, it's the opposite way. Start from the top, create layer of the icing, give a shape of your fir tree, and when icing already here, with a flat and slanted brush, create layer of the gingerbread cooker like this and by the way about the color for the house and for the gingerbread try to mix a really yummy looking color as for me I'm using here for the gingerbread it's a uh, umber burnt it's a kind of complicated mix, by the way. So, next one, it's a ochre light, also a tiny bit of white, red and orange, all together. So, count, it's a five colors. Easy mixes usually have just a two colors into the shade, here it's five. So, try to analyze color on your palette. Again, it's neat to look a yummy for you, like a real gingerbread. Next, it's icing for the house on the roof and also between walls, because when you're creating a real gingerbread house, you have to fix walls together. And uh, usually icing are really nice for it, because it's sticky enough. About icicles uh, the perfect brush for it it's a flat and slanted brush but be careful icicles here no need to be a pointy it's not a real icicles you can find on a street it's still a drops of the icing and any drop will actually have not a pointy but oval looking end isn't it well Right now, house have to dry a little bit. It's time to switch back to the fir tree and create shadow and light on a cookie layer. On each cookie, you have to understand which wall, which part will have light and which gonna stay in a shadow. Light here, main direction, going from the top right to the left. So each right wall of the cookie of the star the cookie have to be a light ochre and left part have to stay in the shadow and the color I used for it it's uh, on the burnt important moment need to give an extra layer of icing for the fir tree 
and look, I really recommend to paint icing first with a mix of white and uh, umberburnt. Very light mix, by the way, but still not white, because this way you still able to do a highlighting on icing. Because this way you will have a visible difference between shadow and light on icing as well, even if uh, this detail is very light. My brush, my brush for the drops, it's a um, Dollar Roni line brush number two. And brush you need to use here, uh, have to be not too pointy, it's a first, and not too small. Don't choose brush number zero or number one, especially if it's a pointy brushes. Uh, oval, remember, it's a drops, not a real icicles. Well, as soon as drops for the house and uh, fir tree done, it's time to detail house. Usually I recommend to go from the general to specific, so always start with the basic shapes and go move to the smaller details. Here it's a door in the center and two tiny windows on the left and the right part. Why I don't recommend to add a third window on a, a left wall, because later we're gonna decorate this house with a jelly candy. Don't forget to put icing all around each window and around a door. Here you also can add this lovely looking drops and on a door as well. That's it! Of course, you can add highlight inside of the windows. And if you want to leave composition like that and complete this painting right at this step, you can do a white splatters on top and that's it. At this point, I recommend to you to put a yellow inside of the windows. But if you want to decorate this house with me, I recommend to you not to use yellow inside of the windows because this adorable and bright color we really need to use for candies. How to plant candies? Same way, from general to specific. So from the start, try to plan candies first. And by the way, I checked so many beautiful photos and uh, works about a uh, ginger houses. Uh, M&M's candies, so popular for decoration for the roof, but I really want to follow periodical order for the candies and uh, I want to create a many different shapes. Uh, well, it can be square, it can be a round shape, it can be a jelly bears. And also I want to add here a candy shaped as a cat head. Let's fill a shape with a yellow and remember, lemon yellow from the tube, clear one, it's a transparent most of the time. So here you need a coverage, mix it with white. This way, look, it's possible to cover even a dark brown with a single layer. Another color, yellow. That's fine, I like how it's looking. Time to add another one. Um, how I can describe this shade? Mostly it's ochre light plus a bit of white for better coverage. And I'd say it's a light mocha color. And uh, be sure this shade lighter than a gingerbread. Can you see this pointy? Ears, so this is a cat head candy. Add a bit of orange like this, and let's create jelly candy beer. Mm. I'm not sure it's possible to paint a shape really clear. I think that's fine. I think that's fine. Small hands are visible, isn't it? Another candy on this side. 
Well, which to pick next? Let's do for more yellow. Just a round candy. And of course you can add any candies and colors you like. Uh, what colors to choose? Yellow we already have. Uh, it can be brown, light brown, orange, red and the very important color here is green. Put at least three or four green spots or candies. We already have a green on the background, so this way this color will help you to connect background and a foreground elements together in a whole composition. About volume. Uh, yeah, for each candy need to put light, middle tone, shadow and very important reflection and cast shadow. For the gingerbread element, that's very easy. You can use that just um, umber burn plus a little bit of yellow for shadow under the candy. But what about icing? There, uh, I can recommend to you to use a glazing technique and go with a very transparent and thin layer of umber burnt. And again, in real tutorial, I'm demonstrating everything uh, very detailed with all comments. Here, I'm really short on time and uh, I want to demonstrate to you big steps here so you will get a nice idea what is waiting for you in a big uh, tutorial. Next, it's uh, slices of uh, lemon. It can be orange. Right now, it's so many beautiful compositions uh, with the flowers or with the fir trees around me and with some uh, ornaments. And by the way, these slices of lemons, orange is so popular. It can be um, covered with gold or silver, but still inside, it's a natural slice of lemon. It's dried. So that's why it's possible to use for decoration. So let's include it for this composition as well. Why I like it at second point? Because it's looking as a wheels. And uh, I mean, why not? We already build uh, a house here. Let's add wheels. This is a fourth one, by the way. On the next side. And uh, the star, an star. Lemon and orange are popular not just for decoration and uh, also very nice for popular uh, Christmas drink, which is a uh, hot wine, glint vein, we're calling it uh, like this here. Usually it's a red wine with the spices and um, a little bit of lemon and orange inside, isn't it? It can be some berries there uh, also and sugar, very tasty smelling so mm, yummy uh, and yeah let's add some spices and by the way here on the left side you can see a basic shape for the future uh, cinnamon another good smelling spice for the hot wine and uh, winter drinks in general this bunch of the cinnamon looking exactly as a firewood isn't it so how to detail a slice of the lemon? Divide it for the smaller segments. Segments are orange here. But in a part of each triangle have a darker looking shade inside almost a red color. The perfect brush for lemon detailing is a flat and slanted brush. Mine is number two, yeah, very small one, because each uh, pointy end is so tiny, so you definitely need a nice control for it. But if you didn't divide any triangles, that's fine, it's possible to fix with a smaller brush, mine is number two, and just add an extra lines between different segments with a light yellow color. Don't forget about uh, the slice, actually thick enough, so this is a side part of it, and it's repeating a curved shape of the 
lemon. This way you need to detail each slice one by one. Uh, about uh, an Easter, I love the smell so much. Brush is number zero and it's a light orange color. Orange plus a little bit of ochre light and white. And just go stripes around each segment, like this, one by one. By the way, it's a nice idea to put um, a star on top of the fir tree as well. It can look very interesting. I can just extra decoration idea. Some highlighting and anise star done. It's really up to you if you want to decorate a fir tree or not, because in my view, fir tree already looking very beautiful, but at some point, you know, I also like decorate a fir trees, let's do it. I'm not sure huge jelly candy gonna look nice here. Maybe if you will create a fir tree solo without a ginger house. If you create them together, similar to my composition, I'd say are uh, red, yellow, orange and green dots more than enough. Each for each part of the ginger cookie. But don't forget to add a cast shadow under the each small colorful spot and also don't forget about a highlight. Here it can be very pointy like a tiny drop of the white color. For fir tree I used red, yellow, middle color between them which is orange and green again. So basically uh, colors repeating those I already used for jelly candies on a gingerbread house. Let me know uh, how do you like this idea to decorate a fir tree a little bit also, or maybe you better prefer when a uh, ginger house uh, well decorated and uh, fir tree staying all pure without any candies on it. Fir tree done and a tiny trick about snow. House and a fir tree, it's already so detailed. If you will do a splatters on top, you will do over detailing that's for sure so i recommend to you to cover a fir tree and a ginger house with a paper and do splatters only there where you have a clear background around be very careful use a nice soft watery consistency of white and look i'm really gentle right now i'm not in a hurry i'm knocking gently on my left hand that's it this way drops looking so round and accurate and a little bit of them on the foreground that's it house and fir tree still staying clear my sign and painting done thank you very much for joining me today uh, thank you for this brilliant idea. I enjoyed it so much. It's given me actually a nice feeling and a very good mood before this Christmas. This is how my painting looking. And if you like it, subscribe my channel, join me on my creative club and of course join my Instagram. Share to me your paintings. Hashtag PaintyCat. I'll catch you later on my other tutorials. It was a painty cat. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, everyone. Bye-bye.